All right, so today, little project is uh, doing a little restoration on a pre-war, pre-World War II uh, bike that was made in Shelby, Ohio, and the customer brought in this uh, reproduction uh, water slide. And uh, so these were all hand done back at the factory, but they he was only able to get one, so. Uh, I'm going to be replicating it as I've done here. Basically, I'm using uh, alpha enamel. I used one shot uh, to spray the gray field, the enamel field down here, and then I used the alpha enamel for the tan color, and I'm also using alpha for the black as well as the red highlights. So what I'm going to do now is probably struggle to find a comfortable way to paint this thing with this bracket and I'm probably going to have to do a little what I call striping yoga so you guys have to bear with me I'm using this really really sweet little script brush here for the outliner this is one that I get from uh, Hobby Lobby it's a pretty generic brush but it's really good for keeping a, a uniform thickness for an outliner around this lettering and stuff and I also have the Von Dago series that I work with too and um, this one I'll be using for the red uh, clean that out real good so this will be the next color here the Von Dago but for this one here I just use a little bit of turpentine with the alpha enamel I get a nice little reservoir kind of going over here and then I'm just gonna jump on here and start uh, start lettering Always load up your brush. Avoid. In the morning, you're okay. Midday jolt cola. Probably not a good combination for this type of lettering. brush did you use for the um, thicker? I used this brush right here. A little sign quill by the number one, maybe. Back in the day, these old bicycle companies would have one employee that pretty much would do all this stuff. And I just keep adding a little bit of mineral spirits to my brush just to keep it nice and smooth. This brush is really handy for a lot of applications for like cartoon type of stuff. So is this Von Dago. They're both about the same. This one's a little bit longer, a little bit more flexible. This one has just a little bit more snap to it. And I, I find it really nice for these outlining and lettering. I don't know if I would necessarily like it as much for illustration work because it doesn't have as much of a variable taper as the Von Dago does. You can get a lot of different variation. Thus, why I use this one because it's rather easy to keep the uh, line consistency. I also like to wait for colors to dry um, when I'm working with this stuff. Uh, it's, when it's not like dragging or sticking on the surface, it's a little easier to keep the consistency going around it. Um, but if you get on it 
at the right point or a little early, what I would consider early. Uh, it does provide some it, more resistance on the brush and the, the uh, paint that's going around the perimeter here. So I like to make sure it's all pretty much set up. So I don't have to deal with that. paint take as long to dry as the one shot? Yeah, it takes about the same amount of time. Maybe a little faster. It's an enamel, so even if it's like, looks dry or it's dry to the touch, it has a little bit <clears throat> more film thickness. And uh, it, you can still do some damage to it, even though you think it's dry. So you have to be really careful. But when it's dry on the surface, it doesn't give you the resistance uh, when you're going around it, like I am right now. Position is key. Anytime you're doing this stuff, getting the proper position and making sure that you got everything out of the wet paint. Breathing control is key as well. Let this dry for a for a day, and I'll come back in and wipe down uh, just the bellow. How long would you wait before you told the customer that it was dry? Because you never know how they're going to handle. 24 hours, depending on how thick it was, if you had to do multiple coats. You could still, in theory, thumb turn it. But usually, 24 hours. That's what I tell people. Don't mess with it. After a million units, it'd probably go bonkers. Yeah. So, for this is the, the Von Dago. required for this than the outline because we're going to variables of uh, thick to thin.
toothbrushes are awesome though. He also makes a left-handed pinstriping brush that I have somewhere in my stash. It is real. I didn't think it was real either because nobody really ever gives lefties much of a shot. No, the taper, the taper is the same. It's the the way that the brush, um, ferrule, and the, on a left-handed brush, it's on the opposite side. See, they stack the, uh, mm -hmm. the bristles on this side of the handle. On the other side, it's it's that side. I don't know if I have it here, or if it's in my other kit. Yeah, it's in the other kit. Interesting side note. Yes. And uh, one year I was down at the Rocky Mountain Panel Jam, and George Weldon hooked me up with one of uh, one of those uh, surprise brushes for the giveaway. It's pretty cool. Actually, I'm like, wow. There we go. Shelby.